We have a lot of news to get to here on the show with Austin Jackson and the Dolphins claiming a linebacker to this 53-man roster. But I want to thank the 500-plus people that subscribed to the channel last night for our Week 10 watch party and also say we're under 250 away from 64K. Hit that sub button. Let's get to that milestone right now, and let's get into today's show. Major Miami Dolphins news after the Week 10 win where they now have a 3-6 and six record, but a lot of roster shuffling is happening down in the 305. Austin Jackson injury news will be touched on as well as the Dolphins adding someone to this defensive unit. And we'll start with the bad news so we can finish on a positive because Austin Jackson will have knee surgery and is out for the season. Mike McDaniel made that comment today at his press conference. He is expected to be ready for 2025 training camp, which is always a good sign, but this is not something good for Miami. Jackson, who just signed a three-year extension this past year and is slated to be the starting right tackle of the future for the Dolphins, now out for the remainder of the season after suffering a knee injury. And the part that stinks about this is not only is Jackson a mainstay on this offensive line, but this group has been relatively healthy for the entire year. Like, when you think about it, Armstead, sure, he missed a game or so, but Robert Jones has been there for the most of the season. He also got injured. We'll probably talk about that tomorrow. Aaron Brewer and Liam Eikenberg have been healthy all year, and so is Austin Jackson. So this is the first time that you've really had an injury to the offensive line that actually changes the way you have to go through the rest of the season. Kendall Lamb, that swing tackle veteran piece, is now projected to be your starting right tackle for the rest of the season, and we'll talk about it a little bit now, but as well as later on in the week on shows that we're going to bring here on the channel of Austin Jackson replacements. Is there a person out there that Miami may try to go sign that is still out there in free agency, or will they just sign someone from their practice squad onto the active roster, a la Jackson Carmen? We'll talk about that throughout this week, but we're going to initially just touch on the impact of this right now, because this is not good for Miami. And, and sure, you are three and six and things might not be able to get worse, but your schedule does allow you to go on a little bit of a run here and having the blind side protector of Tua Tungvaloa now out for the year is not ideal. And going up against a pass rush that features Max Crosby this week is not going to be fun for that. And when you think about trying to compete for the rest of the year, there's a lot of good defensive lines here. Like, the Raiders defensive line, the Packers defensive pass rush, the Texans, the 49ers. Like, that is going to be a concern if this offensive line can continue to play well. And let's take a look here at who is likely going to be the um, long-term, maybe short-term replacement of – Austin Jackson, Kendall Lamb, because he filled in yesterday and played 51 of 53 snaps alongside that offensive line. And I'm just reading off his grades right now. 59 offense, 58.1 pass block, 57.1 run block. So it's not great. But also remember, folks, and if you do remember, recall our video last week, we talked about Patrick Paul getting some work at right tackle at practice. Will the rookie play there? Probably not because he's played left tackle his entire career. Now they are just experimenting to see if he could play and make that switch with Teron Armstead still being here at left tackle and playing well. But it will likely be Kendall Lamb playing right tackle for the remainder of the season, barring injury for the Miami Dolphins. And you see this depth chart. This is up to date right now as of filming. Jackson out for the year on IR, you only have three backup offensive linemen when Andrew Meyer, Cotton, and Patrick Paul, and I expect there to be a player added to this group, specifically a swing tackle. Not going to name any free agents right now because we'll do that tomorrow on a show, but we will note that Jackson Carmen, the practice squad offensive tackle, is likely the top candidate just to be signed to the active roster. He was elevated from the practice squad to the 53-man ahead of the Week 10 Monday Night Football game, and I would expect him to be the first man potentially called, but we'll see if they ultimately do sign an offensive lineman in free agency and who that could possibly be. But get down in the comments section and let me know if they should. Make the call. Should the Dolphins sign an O-lineman in free agency? Type Y for yes, 
or type N for no. If they do, we will let you know um, who that is and break it down on a video. So also make sure you're subscribed. All right, we're going to get into the positive news on the Miami Dolphins with Tyrell Dodson, the linebacker claimed by Miami in just a second. But we do got to tell you about DraftKings, the number one sportsbook and casino here at Dolphins today, and we appreciate them for sponsoring today's show in the middle of the NFL season and with the NBA Cup being here as well. The Emirates NBA Cup is here. You can win big getting in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All 30 teams split into six groups every Tuesday and Friday playing for the right to advance in the single elimination in-season tourney, culminating in the NBA Cup Championship in Vegas. First time, here's something special just for you. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook. Every point counts. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code HEATCHAT. That's code HEATCHAT for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777. Visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash bball. And you could already look ahead to week 11 where the Dolphins host the Las Vegas Raiders. I'll take the Dolphins minus seven and a half. I think they win this game pretty big. The Raiders are not a good football team and the Dolphins might be on a little bit of a heater here. And I'll also take the Raiders under 14 and a half points. You just held the Rams offense to 15 points. I think the Raiders will score less than that, plus 154. All lines and odds are subject to change, but shout out to DraftKings. Download the app and create the account using code HEATCHAT. It's a dual link code for our Heat channel, our Dolphins channel, to get $200 in bonus bets when you place a $5 wage shirt. Shout out to DraftKings for sponsoring today's show. All right, let's hop over to the positive news on the Miami Dolphins, and it is the fact that the Dolphins added a linebacker. They claimed Tyrell Dodson off waivers, and this is his fifth season in the NFL. He spent the first four years with Buffalo and was signed to a one-year deal with the Seattle Seahawks this year, ultimately was benched in favor of a rookie linebacker. I'm spacing on the name from Seattle. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't affect us, um, but Dodson of apparently did not take that well, and that's the reason why they released him. And the interesting thing on Dodson is that his numbers have actually been good this year. 71 tackles, a pair of sacks, some TFLs, and when you look at his PFF numbers throughout the year, he is graded out this year. 65.8 in terms of overall grade, 72.2 tackling grade, and 73.3 coverage grade. Now, PFF isn't the Bible or anything like that, but those grades are better than the linebackers you've had this year. Like David Long Jr., Anthony Walker Jr. have not been good whatsoever. And then now that you add Tyrell Dodson to this group, there is a chance in a pathway that the Dolphins – get him in the building, he shows out, learns the defense, and ultimately could be that LB2 to Jordan Brooks because Brooks has been your best player. And specifically, when you look at Dodson's grades this year in coverage, he's allowed 24 catches, 179 yards, no touchdowns, and a PBU. So he's actually been pretty good, and we mentioned the two sacks. And if you go back just one year, Dodson filled in a lot at linebacker for Buffalo, played 589 snaps, was not a crazy starter by any means, but he was very good as their LB3 behind Matt Milano and their other guy. And his grades last season, 90.2, 86.1 in run defense, 88.4 in coverage. So this isn't a bum. And also, this is why you follow me on Twitter, by the way, because I tweeted out yesterday when the news came out that the Dolphins were, or excuse me, the Seahawks were going to release Dodson to waivers. I tweeted out, hey, if Anthony Walker Jr. and or David Long Jr. struggle again tonight against the Rams, I'd take a flyer on Dodson because of what he's done in the past for Buffalo and this year in Seattle. And maybe Chris Greer has got my tweet notifications on, so you do too, because he ultimately does claim Dodson to add to this roster. The fascinating aspect of all of this, in my opinion, is what happens next in this depth chart and on this roster, because you just saw the linebacker group. That is now, what is it? I think that's six linebackers on the interior. 
yeah, you got Jordan Brooks, you got Anthony Walker Jr., David Long, Duke Riley, Tyndall, and now Dodson. Riley and Tyndall both play special teams. Dodson is added to this 53 man. So who gets the boot? Now, we'll tell you who my prediction is potentially in just a second. But grade the Dolphins Tyrell Dodson move, the claiming of the linebacker. It's a one-year deal, cheap contract, linebacker that has decent numbers, provides you more depth. It's not like it's in any crazy A-plus move, but I'll give it a B. I'll give it a solid B. I think that's fair to say for getting a decent player for basically nothing on the waivers. The person who I think may get waived, and maybe they ultimately do get rid of Channing Tindall or Duke Riley or something like that to go back to having five interior linebackers. Maybe they do that. But if I had to predict who they would get rid of, it would actually be a wide receiver in Dwayne Eskridge, who also former Seattle Seahawks. Why do I think it could be D. Eskridge? Well, this entire season, the Miami Dolphins have had five wide receivers active each week. Hill, Waddle, um, Malik Washington, and then they've had a flurry of other two guys. Well, right now, after activating River Craycraft off of IR, you have six. You have OBJ, Waddle, Hill, Malik, Eskridge, and Craycraft. I think you could go back to only having five guys here, and we forgot to update this. That's so on me. Craycraft is not on IR anymore, and Barrios is on IR, so we just have to flip that. So, But either way you now have six wide receivers. And I don't think you need six to be active. So if you want to keep all six linebackers, that's fine. That's why I would just release D. Eskridge since River Craycraft is now active for this football team. All right, that's going to do it for this video. It was thrown together on the fly during our live show. And that's why you need to be subscribed to the channel because we go live every Tuesday to break down news, rumors, and everything in between this Miami Dolphins football team. And after a win against the Rams on Monday, Chris Greer did not rest on his laurels and had to make some moves to this roster with injuries, but also adding somewhat to this defense. So make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a beat around this football team.